I go on to ask about uh, hydrogen and the announcement on three ports, uh, particularly Cromarty uh, and of course uh, Firth of Forth on Friday. You are the Cabinet Secretary who has the two Green Ministers uh, within your portfolio in the Scottish Parliament. Are they fully supportive uh, of the three port announcements that was made jointly by the UK and Scottish Governments on Friday? No, I think it was quite clear is that the, the Green Party take a different position on the issue of uh, Green Free Ports, uh, which is why it's not part of the Butte House Agreement. So, so there is no collective responsibility within the Scottish Government for Free Ports within your partners? They, 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 so no, it's not part of, of course, they, they, they take a different position on the matter, which they stated at the time on, on Friday when the announcement was made. Uh, but as ministers, they're not directly involved in issues around the, the Green Free Ports. But, but they are in the department that is directly involved, you as Cabinet Secretary, they are your junior ministers, uh, and their lack of support, and indeed their outright opposition, you don't think is a concern within your own department, that your junior ministers disagree? No, so, um, sorry, we, we sorry, sorry Mr Matheson, sorry, sorry, Cabinet Secretary, when I speak and you speak, then we will cancel each other out. So if you just wait for me to finish, then I'll be able to uh, ask you to answer. You don't have any concerns at all that your junior ministers take a diametrically opposed view to you on such an important issue such as free ports in Scotland? No, I don't. Uh, and why not? I mean, when you have discussions about the opportunities and the benefits, 25,000 jobs uh, coming to Cromarty, uh, I think it's 40 or 50,000 jobs at uh, Firth of Forth, do you not have concerns that your junior members, uh, junior ministers, uh, don't support that? No, it's not. It's just... it, no, because the Scottish Government supports them. But they are Scottish government ministers. I shouldn't really have to point that out to you. Yeah, I'm, I'm well aware of that. But from the Scottish government's policy point of view, we support the Green Free Ports and we're taking forward policy measures that will help to support them going forward. So in terms of uh, their role and their different, uh, difference in views apart in the matter, it, it, it doesn't raise any concerns with me in terms of uh, the potential impact that will have in taking it forward as a policy. So you're happy you can take a different approach from your ministers. Would you then strongly disagree and, and indeed uh, question how the Greens could describe free ports, which both the Scottish and UK government uh, have backed as failed and dated Tory gimmicks? Ports. They're wrong to say that, aren't they, your Green colleagues? Uh, look, you, no, if, you, if you want to take evidence from the, from, uh, the Green Party on their position on free ports, my suggestion would be is to ask them to come along as witnesses and can they can, I, can, I they can set out their position just what now, their opposition. Order, order, Cabinet Secretary, we are here to try and get your evidence concerning hydrogen and I'm hoping that Mr Ross will start to ask some questions just about the focus of this inquiry. You've asked about, about the hydrogen. Greens and about free ports. Could we now get back to the substance of this session, please, which is hydrogen in Scotland? Well, thank you. And I'll go back to my line of questioning, which is about hydrogen in Scotland that we can benefit from through the free ports uh, at Cromarty. Therefore, do you disagree? Would you disassociate yourself with the remarks of the Green Party who call these uh, Tory gimmicks? They're wrong, aren't they? Look, I, I don't. Do, I, I think, I'm just I think asking for your opinion. Who has any? Sorry, I, I think anybody who has any detailed understanding of the hydrogen economy will know that they are not dependent upon green free ports. So uh, the way in which the hydrogen economy will, will develop will largely be through export-driven interest in the importation of green hydrogen. And the gateway to achieving that is actually through the rollout of both the onshore and offshore uh, wind. Uh, now, the hydrogen economy would uh, uh, still develop uh, and grow, I think, at a very significant level, even if we didn't have green free ports in Scotland. They may help in terms of uh, some companies who choose to base themselves up from the tax advantages which they actually get there. And a good practical example of that is, is for example, is the is a hydrogen production facility which is being taken forward by Scottish Power uh, and by the distilleries in Vergordon. Or, for example, Gordon Bush that's been taken forward by SSE uh, in the Highlands, which have not been dependent upon any free port status. And I fully expect, actually, hydrogen development within the northeast of Scotland uh, and areas that are not covered by free ports will continue to grow and develop. So I don't think uh, realising the ambitions that we have in developing Scotland's hydrogen economy, particularly the export potential it's got, 
is largely dependent upon green free ports. But, but Cabinet Secretary, you've mentioned free ports a number of times. I'm going to try for, for the fourth time, I think. Why can you not, as a Scottish Government Minister who has backed these plans for Scotland to have two free ports, say that your Green colleagues, who are allowed, as you say, because it's not mentioned in the Butte House Agreement, to take a different view, why can you not say that in your personal opinion or in your government's opinion that the Green Party are wrong to criticise these free ports and the investment and the jobs that they will bring into the country and that they are wrong to call them a failed and dated Tory gimmick? Well, the, the reason I've mentioned free ports on a number of occasions is because you've raised the matter with me. But my, my view is that is that they will not play a key part in helping to deliver and realise their ambitions around the hydrogen economy in Scotland. I actually think the potential, you just have to look at our hydrogen action plan. There are over 60 hydrogen projects that are in development or proposed across different parts of Scotland. Uh, only a limited number of them will actually fall to areas that are covered by green free ports. So I actually think the hydrogen economy will develop nevertheless without green free ports or with them. Uh, I think for some businesses that may choose to base themselves within a green free port, it may have some tax advantage to them as a result. But I don't think it will actually have a big part to play in helping to realise the extent and the opportunity we have in developing the hydrogen economy in Scotland, which I think potentially will not only generate uh, a significant amount of income for our economy, but also has the potential to help to support significant employment across the country as well. OK, I'm going to move on because I'm really struggling to understand why the Cabinet Secretary for Energy in Scotland cannot say categorically uh, that these... Just, uh, before, just before you do move on, I just want to remind colleagues that we've only got the Cabinet Secretary...